Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin. I'm a photographer here with CBS 17. And I'm Kelly Kennedy. I'm the reporter and we work every single weekend. Yeah, weekend warriors. So yeah. We just wanted to give you a little behind the scenes look at what our day looks like. It's mm -hmm. always kind of unpredictable, right? Yeah, we never really know what we're going to do till we show up. And even sometimes when we do, the whole day can change. That's news for you. Yeah, within like 30 seconds, our entire day can just go out the window and we're going somewhere else. Yeah. But let's hope that doesn't happen today. Hopefully we'll have like a kind of, you know, easy Sunday. Yeah. Um, so we are about to head to Durham. Yep. We're about to go to our second story for the day. Oh, I gotta buckle my seatbelt. Safety first, kids. So um, we want y'all to ride with us and I'll kind of show you, know, what I do on a daily basis at work. Do you want to tell them a little bit about the first story we just did? Yeah, so the first story we did was um, with the church and they were basically giving away toys uh, for uh, families that you know got hit pretty hard recently um, clothing a lot of clothing and mm -hmm. diapers you know a lot of families are affected by the government shutdown so they were trying to offer this exactly. to get back to the community yeah and it's always a good thing when we can come out and localize like stuff in the community because you know we cover a whole lot of different stuff and it's always good to have like a feel-good story i like doing that type of stuff and so that first story was called a vosat for those of you that don't know the news lingo it kind of sounds weird but basically a vosat is like a shorter version of a story it's typically where the anchor reads over video and then there's one clip from an interview sometimes i would do a vosat if it's like live or something where i would read it and there'd be a quick interview our longer stories that we do are called packages and that's when it's like my track, like my voiceover throughout, throughout video with like little clips of interviews kind of interspersed in the basically, story. Basically the big story. The big story. Yeah. So the big story today is, it's kind of an interesting story. So we're headed to Duke right now, Duke University. So basically the director of graduate studies for a Duke University School of Medicine department resigned yesterday, effective immediately. And the reason she resigned, screenshots of emails that she sent to students were sent all over social media. It kind of just blew up. And a lot of students are really upset about what she said. They're calling it xenophobic and inappropriate, disgraceful. So basically, um, I saw some of these screenshots of these emails. Um, the woman's name is Megan Neely. She's the director of the Master of Biometrics program. She, she suggested that students refrain from speaking Chinese to improve their English. Now. She said she encourages students to use English 100% of the time, whether they're on campus or in any kind of a professional setting. Now, she also said that two faculty members said they were disappointed that students were speaking Chinese very loudly in student study areas. Now, obviously, a lot of international students and just other students in the school are upset about this. What do you think about this, Austin? I mean, Duke has a lot of international students, you know, so of course this is going to, you know, rub people the wrong way. And that's what so these students were saying, like, that's their native language, that's a source of comfort for them. Why shouldn't they be allowed to speak their yeah. language? Yeah, precisely. So we are headed to Duke right now, basically. We got permission from the public information officer. You have to get permission to go on campus since it is a private university. They're fancy. And he basically gave us a 20 minute window to try to get interviews from students and also probably we'll get some video of the campus and stuff to use for our stories. It's a little bit difficult to do interviews like that, especially when it's a topic that is not really positive for the school, although the school is apologizing. The dean actually sent out um, an email apologizing to these students. She also said there's going to be an investigation and they're going to see what they can do to make it more comfortable for all international students in that department. Um, and also, of course, um, the woman who sent those emails has resigned effective immediately. Students also started a petition about this because they were so upset about it. So that's probably also one of the reasons yeah. why. But it, it will be a little bit difficult for us since we're going to be kind of followed around by someone from Duke to get students to speak freely there. So that's why um, we've been working with social media to find students who are in some of these international organizations, and we think we're going to meet up with them afterwards. So we're not yeah. kind of they don't feel too pressured. Right, to. exactly. So you guys will get you know a behind the scenes look on you know what it's like to get interviews with people, mm -hmm. um, you know the kind of conversations that don't make the air. Um, and you know, you'll just kind of see what we have to do to 
bring the story full circle. Right, because like every, it's a process. We do mm -hmm. a lot of different things to like, what you see on air is the finished product, but there's like a lot that goes into it in yeah, between, right? Yeah, a whole lot. We take about anywhere from, I guess it could be like from 10 minutes up to like sometimes even an hour, and we have to condense that into about mm -hmm. less than two minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's definitely a process. Yeah, I'll a typical story, they really want it to be around a minute and 20 seconds. So mm -hmm. that's really hard when you have like a lot of different interviews and a lot to say. Um, on certain stories, so it's really just kind of a process of, you know, you go get your interviews. Austin like um, shoots video of different yeah. things that work for the story. Sometimes, like in this instance, we'll probably use screenshots of those emails. Yeah, um, we can use a we can use a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. Normally, um, Kelly will talk to the person, and while they're talking, maybe before or afterwards, I'll get what's called like a two shot, mm -hmm. and just. I mean, have you been here a long time or? Uh, it's my third year. Okay. I'm a junior studying biology. Do you like it? Shot and just yeah. them having a natural conversation, and, and that's basically for video purposes. So I have something to go back and cut um, back to versus just you know what we call a talking head, which is just the person right. uh, being interviewed the whole time. So you know we have to. Uh, we have to think creatively. Some, yeah, you gotta be creative with it. And so then after that, um, once we have all the video that we need, once we have the interviews we need, we come, we're usually in the car. We kind of like live in the car. Yeah, we definitely do. I got my lunchbox in here. Um, we uh, and we got a lot our, of we all our chargers. We get fast food a lot of the times. <laughs> I got my makeup in here. If I have to touch up my makeup before we go live, we do. This is pretty much like our mobile home yeah, <laughs> when we're so working. Basically, after we get finished doing the interview, um, me and Kelly will sit down. She'll start writing the package. I'll start, I'll, first, I'll start like listening to the interviews because that's that's right. actually the most annoying part of this job for me. I have to listen through all the interviews and like transcribe so, everything that I want to you. Austin kind of can chill and maybe eat a sandwich while I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Then I write the story, um, and then once I write the story, we have to send it over to a manager and we have to wait for them to approve it. And then once they get it approved. I'll go ahead and edit the story. Well, you and, do the voiceover. Well, yeah, Kelly tracks her voice first, and then I'll put the audio with the video. We'll make it look real pretty, put the bells and whistles on it, and the finished product is what you all see on your uh, local mm -hmm. news channel. And so today, um, we don't have a 6 o'clock show. Normally on the weekends, we have a 6 o'clock and an 11 show that we have to turn content for, but today we don't have a 6 o'clock show, so normally we would probably be live at 6, but since there's no 6 o'clock show, we're what you call a straight package, which basically means it's just a sh the whole straight recorded piece with no like live part in it. So like some days, um, after we finished our story, we'd have to go drive to our live location, Austin would have to set up all the live equipment, and we'd do the live shot. Yeah. So, um, we're going to probably take a pause right there, and uh, we'll uh, hit you guys back up once we get to show you <clears throat> kind of how we do the interview process. Yep, stay with us. We'll be back. Hey guys, can I ask you a quick question on the local news? Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard about what happened at the medical school. Did you guys hear about it at all? No. So, so like, clip that on your pants or put it in your pocket. So, not this, this part here. Sorry. I don't have pants, but oh. like I can do this. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, perfect. So y'all look at me, not at the camera. Can you just tell and pronounce your first name and your last name for me? Uh, my first name is Farzeen and last name is Najam. Um, I'm an international undergrad student from Pakistan. So like, it's like taking away your rights to decide what language you want to speak. Mm -hmm. So when these first, these emails first came out and kind of got all over social media, how did you feel as an international student? Uh, not good. Um, I think it, there was a very immediate reaction when we felt not accepted by Duke University. Um, as the uh, professor stated in the email, it's hard to be an international uh, student at Duke. It's hard to be an international student anywhere. We're editing our package now. And I just got more emails. Approached her asking for pictures of graduate students so they could identify students they saw speaking Chinese very loudly in the student lounge. So basically, we went to Duke to their regular undergrad campus because that's where the guy, the public information officer, met us so we could get interviews with students. But it wasn't the actual medical um, school, the Duke Medical School, and that's where this, you know, actually took place. So obviously we wanted to show video of the medical school. We couldn't find any in our archive. I reached out, there's a different public information officer to get permission to shoot at the medical school. So I called her 
And she said she's not in her office on the weekend, so she couldn't give us permission. So we had to like shoot from like across the street off the property. So we barely got any good video of the campus of the medical school. Excuse me. Had no archive video of it. So we had like regular university video, like a little bit of the medical school, just from what we could get not being on the property. We got the photo of the professor off Duke's website that we can use. And we have screenshots of the emails. And we have those couple interviews with students. We also interviewed, well, we actually got lucky on campus because we interviewed um, an international student from Pakistan. We just happened to find her. And then we also found on Facebook another international student from Mexico who um, spoke really well. And we just met her by the Panera and we interviewed her there. So now um, we are sitting at a cruiser's gas station in Durham, I believe. In Durham. And uh, Austin is editing the package. I am communicating with our producers and assistant news director as well as like doing the script for the web article. And we were supposed to be off in like 15 minutes, but that's not gonna happen. Not today. What do I do with the lift? Email continued. I already ate mine. What do I do? You want some almonds? No, I'm good. What do I do with the lid for these? Right. She loses everything. He's not lying. He's not lying. When you live in a car, it's like pretty easy. So you he found it. <laughs> you wanna cut these sides or what? Let me take a look really quick. Graduate program director at Duke School of Medicine has stepped down after a controversial email went viral. In it, she urged international students to speak English. CBS 17's Kelly Kennedy spoke with international students about the emails that some call discriminatory. When dozens of Duke University students checked their email on Friday afternoon, what they found in their inbox made many of them feel very unwelcome on campus. I felt like it was really offensive. Thanks to social media, that email has now been seen by people around the world. Megan Neely, director of the Master of Biometrics program, sent the email. She says faculty members approached her asking for pictures of graduate students so they could identify students they saw speaking Chinese very loudly in the student lounge. Neely's email continued in bold writing. They were disappointed that these students were not taking the opportunity to improve their English and were being so impolite as to have a conversation that not everyone on the floor could understand. I would understand that if the whole thing was in a class and people were like speaking in their native languages, but if they're like sitting together and they're like randomly talking, I think like that's their right. She continued on to say, I encourage you to commit to using English 100% of the time. English is not our first language. International student Paulina Guerra says many students have started a petition. Duke touts its diversity, but then when push comes to shove, international students are not being protected and are actively being discriminated against. An email with a similar tone that Neely sent to students in February 2018 has also surfaced. In the email, she tells students that speaking their native language in the department may give faculty the impression they are not taking the opportunity seriously. The email goes on to say, as a result, they may be more hesitant to hire or work with international students. It's basically giving a warning to all international students, like, hey, we might not want to work with you because of the fact that you're foreign. I did reach out to Neely for comment, but so far, I have not heard back. Reporting in Durham, I'm Kelly Kennedy for CBS 17 News. And the medical school dean put out a statement apologizing to students. It reads in part, to be clear, there is absolutely no restriction or limitation on the language you use to converse and communicate with each other. Your career opportunities and recommendations will not in any way be influenced by the language you use outside the classroom. The dean has requested the university's Office of Institutional Equity to conduct a thorough review of the master's program. Students say they would like the identities of the two faculty members who complained about students speaking Chinese made public. They say they would also like the university to provide cultural sensitivity training to all staff.